Good evening, All Stars. How's it going on this Wednesday night? Hope you're all well. Uh, feels a bit strange being back on a Wednesday after uh, after the old Sunday night filler and then the Dimbles Monday night thriller. So uh, yeah, back to our usual slot. Um, Rob Sloth was going to be on comms with us tonight, but um, he is too successful a man in his professional life. And um, he is in London and tied up. So we are going to go solo tonight. And um, yeah, we're in the game week five and some real trend lines emerging in terms of the leagues. Um, we've got Mike Savage, who's in the chat there tonight. His drivetrain side are absolutely flying with 10 points from 12 undefeated. Um, in terms of the league, so St. Domingo's in the Eastern Conference with a game in hand. In terms of the Central, it is Alcatraz and the rest yet to concede a goal. Um, and El Lobo and Dandy's hoping to get off the mark tonight with some horrific stats against them. Into the Western, definitely the closest. This is what we did say was kind of probably going to be the most interesting um, of the leagues. And good evening to Dan, Mega Horse, and Kitchen Dan. Good evening to Jens. Jens, we're going to go with you straight away, my man because I know you want to get your head down. So without further ado, let's go over to the old Vikings, who are, um, they are two wins and two losses from four. Last time out looked absolutely dominant against the El Lobo Fire, created chances for days, and Maxim Segalgo got a hat-trick on his debut. They do go as is tonight with no changes, and uh, they are playing against the Memphis Reigns, who are one of the three teams yet to win and yet to secure any points at all. Um, and Rox goes as is with his classical one at the back, three up top, and is tackling three DMCs who are yet to do anything really significant in terms of the league. Um, so let's have your predictions in the chat. We go Vikings, I think, pretty 
straightforward home win would be what we'd be expecting. And there is Donny. I think Dimble, wow, 2 0 already. Dimble pointed out on the stream 3 0. Sigal go, wow, 3 0. And we played 16 minutes. And the Memphis Reigns are in all sorts of trouble. Don't look to be collecting the first point, never mind a, a goal tonight. Um, Dimble did see it on chat with Savage on Monday night. He said Donny is doing bits in that MC position, which is a, as big a compliment as you can pay to this uh, this Vikings tactic. Really, that's getting numbers out of a player that hasn't really done it for anyone. Um, Vikings in control at half time, as you'd expect. Donny picking up that yellow card, but having one goal from his one shot on target, and Deddy from that wing back position, and Imar chipping in with the assists and goals spread around quite nicely. Jens, if you'd like to let us know what you want to do, mate, but I imagine you do as is or protect that Donny yellow card. Evening, Hopkins, mate. Hope you're well. Alcatraz flying. Um, over to the Memphis Reigns, um, sixes and sevens, and the keeper is on a four. So in the absence of uh, in the absence of rocks, uh, no one is not going to be live. I think it's only right that we make that sub, as anyone would be doing in a half time position with a keeper on the four. And Jens goes as is. I hope you don't mind that sub, Jens. I think it's uh, it's what we'd probably do for for everyone really in that position as the Vikings look to boost that goal difference with a clean sheet. Sigalko has absolutely came to life in this Vikings side and there's a penalty. Sigalko is going to take it. No, Saeed is going to take it with his first ever goal for Vikings and Saeed does not miss penalties. Over at the Vikings, Derry has now improved his rating to a 10. Dhoni has improved it to an 8, maximum on a 9. And um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's not even out of third gear for the Vikings, and they look absolutely awesome at the minute. If you're Jens, you maybe get one of the big guys off, potentially protect the likes of Imar, or maybe the likes of uh, Dede or Cannavaro if you really did think you wanted to. But I can't imagine you'd be doing anything other than just purely to mix things up. We'll have a look at the Memphis Reigns. Um, Crespo is struggling, so I think we'll bring on Jimenez. And again, I'm sure Jens, given the circumstances, we're rocks at the minute. I'm sure Jens won't mind that at all. Um, and we'll just stop him from going down to 10 men by bringing Montero on as well. Um, and Jens does roll with a little bit of protectionism for Dede. Junior comes on for Dede and Enrique for Mackay. And he rolls. And the Vikings look to add to what is an absolutely comprehensive performance having beaten their local 5-1 and are 4-0 up with 15 minutes left to play. And um, they could make it five for two games on the bounce. Are they going to get another one? Saviola goes down and there is a consolation goal. It'll be 5-1, 5-1. Oh, and there is another goal. Daniel Jimenez, 5-2, 4-2 rather. Um, and Jens will be a little bit frustrated they didn't hang on for the clean sheet, which is really clinical from the Vikings, 4-2. And that puts them on three wins from five now and looking really, really solid. Over at the Memphis Reigns, well, the changes definitely had an impact. Costanzo, Melito and Jimenez not rating any lower than a seven. And the rest of the team kind of picking up their performances as the game wore on. Hard lines rocks and well done to Jens. We're going to go over to an absolutely massive clash now. This is the drive train against St. Domingo's absolutely colossal clash. And if drive train, drive train were to win this tonight, they would be four points ahead of St. Domingo's. If St. Domingo's was to win this. They've gone 12 points with a game in hand and already some distance between themselves and the rest. Um, Mike's uh, Mike's, nab Mike's message was, it's boring, but I'm going to go as is. And my response was, I don't blame you. You're absolutely flying. He's getting numbers out of the likes of Rivaldo on ML, which we've rarely seen. Dimble's done it a few times for Cosmos, um, but not really got much out of him. And uh, Del Vecchio carries over his Super League form, having been really, really good at AMC. Potatoes in the chat. Good timing that, my man. Hope you're ready for a bit of half term. Over to the Bisons. They do change things up ever so slightly, just in terms of personnel. Um, just change in the DMC line. Evening, Alex. How you doing, my man? And Leonardo comes in for a bit of a debut at AMC. Pierre, who came on as a sub and got a goal last time out, goes onto the bench again. Jacques on the bench, who I believe is on his way out of the Bisons, and Mendieta in his unfamiliar position of MR. And it'll be interesting to see if he can provide the supply for what has been a very solid and reliable striking partnership of Hussein and Rossini. 
kick the ball off and drive train already have a lot of the ball there. But Ryan Giggs with an early chance, Rossini goes down, Mendieta whips in the free kick. You'd expect him and Giggs to be whipping it in there for the two target men. And there is a goal on his debut from Leonardo in AMC position. He is one of those table-esque players with the FLSC kind of thing. Um, and he's done bits for him straight away. Henri gets on goal, Boya gets in goal. But it's cleared. Drive chain certainly creating chances, but Saint Domingo's Bisons are just so so clinical with the uh, the attacks that they do have. Half time, we get a half time, and uh, actually the Bisons have have dominated the stats there. In terms of performances, no yellow cards to worry about. Condition isn't an issue, even though it's only a myth. And the lowest rated person is Isaac Ogoronkwo, but he has very little to do, and that's probably why. Over to the drivetrain, we have a five in there for Marco Uliano, um, which is unusual given the form he's been in. And Rivaldo hasn't seen much of the ball on that ML position. Um, the rest of the forward line, an unhappy Figo, as um, Savage says. Um, an unhappy Figo is, uh, is only on a six and has missed all of his tackles on that right-hand side. And when you're up against gigs, you need to be putting in those tackles. Who got the assists for Tato? No assist. Must have been a solo effort. And we'll see what Savage wants to do at half time. So Zizi on the bench there. He has kind of liked to bring Zizi on every now and again. Might go two up top with schools in behind. But Del Vecchio has been in okay form. Um, and you probably want to give it 15 minutes before doing anything. And that is exactly the call from both gents. As is, looked good then from Tato. And as is from Savage as we trundle on to 60 minutes. And there is Rossini who surely puts the game to bed. And then he had another chance, but he puts it wide and it's a terrible effort. Nines, eights and sevens, nothing to worry about there. Mendiet are probably a little bit quiet on that MR um, against, uh, against the drivetrain. And actually, probably a result of his fitness as well. 74%, although Tato isn't a big believer. Kolosak may come on, I think, for a little bit of a farewell performance. And uh, I think we may well see that boy Pierre come on again, as he's a bit of a home save favourite for Tato. Since the half time, we've we've plummeted a few six down to fives for Savage. It's got significantly worse with Henri Del Vecchio, Figo, and Uliano not really doing anything to to maintain their place in the eleven. And um, Savage was talking to Dimble on Monday night about you know not necessarily being able to sell him because he hasn't got um, an MR. Um, Savage, I'm happy to let Cafu go for that right hand side of yours if you want to talk anything, mate. Um, I think he was my first pick though, so it'd probably have to be a bit of a biggie to be honest, mate. But yeah, um, feel free to, to have a chat with me if you want. And conditions wise, nothing really too massive. Rivaldo on 83%, Figo on 82%. I would be really surprised if Figo isn't getting the hook here. Um, Madavik, yeah, who's a solid backup, could maybe come on or you could push Boya out to MR and bring on uh, schools in there. MC maybe and Del Vecchio were two up top. I'm not too sure what, what Savage is going to do, but probably for the first time this season, Drive Train are chasing a game. They've not conceded many. They've only conceded three across four games tonight, uh, prior to tonight. And in the one game, they've conceded two with half an hour to play. Tato does make the one change. It's Pierre for Hussein, as we kind of called. And we'll just give Savage just a, a minute or so more just to say what he wants to do. I suspect, knowing Savage, he's very, very prompt with these changes. And I suspect that uh, that it's probably going to be a bit of a comprehensive change of shape. Maybe one DMC, four across the middle, one AMC and two up top. Um, in that kind of full Chester 2-1-4-1-2. But we'll see what he wants to do. Alex apologising there for falling asleep in the double cup marathon um, for the old Swempy. Um, Savage, I'm not sure if YouTube's done that thing where... Oh, there we go. It's done it. Um, so Figo for Madavikia. Henri back to AMC. With an arrow, no striker. He's going false nine. I like that. With an arrow, not no arrow. Brilliant. And we roll until full time. And you'll probably think, here's Giggs, and there is hits the crossbar. I think it was uh, lots of chances. And there is Leonardo again. This is an impressive debut, says the commentary text. And it is indeed an impressive performance all round from St. Domingo's. That was billed as a bit of a heavyweight clash. But to be honest, 
it was uh, it was David and Goliath, um, and David didn't win. That was as good as the Bisons have looked all season, and that was as bad as Drivetrain have looked all season. Ryan Giggs there with a ten and the man in the match performance. How many times has he done it for Tato? And then some of the fives just didn't really get turned round, and uh, the Bisons have have asserted their dominance at the top of that table in the Eastern Conference with a game in hand. They could extend their lead to five five points by the time the ties come round in that odd four game weeks. Um, we are over to the Steam Pigs, and Steve has just dropped in at the chat. Good evening, Steve, mate. I hope you're well, my man. How's things going? Um, and this is how the Steam Pigs go. They go as is to their last game. Kiel maintains his position in AMC, and they did squeak past the Memphis Reigns, having been one of the four sides without a win. They did get the win last time out. Um, Raquel May in that MC position sometimes can really be absolutely brilliant, sometimes can be a bit shit, and I'm not sure we've seen enough to uh, to make our mind off. Over to the Des Moines Demons, who have definitely got the most interesting selection tonight. If you haven't spied it already, Wilfred Baumer in the striker's position, which you know you can play there, but that is a an absolutely horsey move. And um, horse brings in a couple of reserves just to strengthen that. What would be a 24 horse likes to kind of dip and choose and select some of those reserves. So he does have a slightly bigger squad, given the fact that you know for entertainment value, he likes the likes of Dr. Kamalo, Johnny Hellady, Yahaya Cordozo, Romashenko. Um, I think it's absolutely um, justified when you're as uh, when you're as a bit batshit crazy as uh, as horse he is. But Wilfred Brama starts up top. Stay right. I'll be thinking that this is nailed on for a Bauma Man of the Match performance. Um, let me know your score predictions in the chat with this brilliant Steam Pigs home kit. Probably my favourite home kit colours in the entire league. We've had two minutes and a hell of a lot of text there. Raquel May takes the corner, strikes at Toldo, saves. Yepes in there, having a bit of a block. Sim Koviak, he's been quiet for the Des Moines Demons. Uh, he was pretty terrible last game out, if I remember. And there is Albert, but the whistle is up and the effective offside trap from the Des Moines Demons. Steele really be wanting to not have one win after four in this, given that he didn't play one of the one of the fixtures on Monday night. He does have a game in hand on some of the other teams. Elbert. Elbert is big amongst it so far, but he just really hasn't made it pay off other than the disallowed goal. Des Moines have created very, very little. You do wonder if that Balmer experiment just isn't paying off. And um, and actually, um, the minds have created some of it, not all of it. Steam pigs creating seven of the chances, the minds creating four, but the text certainly didn't reflect that. Horse is saying Simkovic was man a match last time out. Was it the game before where he was he's pretty poor? Let's have a little look. He's had a shit one, any yeah, game before? Yeah, well done, mate. Um, in a in a race of you versus me, you are always right. Um, over to the Steam Pigs first of all, as they're the home side. The Elias doing bits there, five out of his seven tackles, and Harry Q is putting the graft in up top, but yet to see the rewards. Um, George Atlas, interestingly, with two shots, neither of which are on target, and he's the highest rated player for the Steam Pigs at half time. The Moines Demons, it is a little bit of a pick and mix eleven. And the ratings are pick and mix as well. Some sixes in there. Quite a few sixes in there, actually. Um, and just really struggling to get the likes of Simkoviak and the likes of Extaveria creating stuff in behind. Um, tackle's not looking too bad. Round about a 75% strike rate other than Paredes and Kieran Dyer. And we will see what Dan wants to do as the as-is comes in from Steve Wright at half time. I was just about to say, I think we'll see in our row from Dan on Exterbiria, who is a, a bit of a talisman for him. And we'll go to 60 minutes. And there is Albert getting his second goal of the night, but only the first one that's counted. And um, Des Moines have really struggled to get their foot on the ball. Dyer getting right in it there for the first time, probably. Exterbiria rifles one in and curse of the commentator maybe that is Simkoviak who when we talk about Exterbiria being a challenge talents man um, Exterbiria and Simkoviak is definitely another one with him probably think the straight swap for Steven Gerrard or if he's feeling as though he has to chase this you might go Exterbiria MC with an arrow and Fiore or Canute A either as an AMC 
or two up top. Steve, if you can have your 60 minute substitutions ready, we'll do 60 minutes now because it's 58 minutes. And remember that the managers can do a team instructions change um, if they do so wish once in the game. Some quite clear cut wins tonight, Vikings and Bisons. And now Steam Pigs look really in control of this game. Wonder if it's precedent for some of the other games, if it's going to be a really, really just solid win for the team that comes out on top. Um, we'll just jump over back to the Steam Pigs while Dan decides what he wants to do. Conditions wise for Steve, 84% on Impenza, but other than that, all looking pretty solid. And ratings wise, Steve is in the game and Penza is actually his worst performing player. Maybe go two AMCs if you just want to show things up ever so slightly, but it'll not make that much difference. Um, and Dan does make changes. Baumat to Baumat to wing back. Tenetto to left centre midfield. There we go. And I believe that is a Canute debut for Des Moines. Yes. How's he looking? Let's have a little look. Solid, if unspectacular. And Stay leaves it until the full time whistle. We'll see if Des Moines can get anything. Yori Lipmanen's in there as he tries to get his team back into the game. Elbert's offside. He's been right amongst it, has Elbert. And there is the second goal. 2 0 for the Steam Pigs. And Sebastian Frey lets it run free, but a defender's in there. Elbert with another chance. Is he going to get a hat trick following on from the Segal goal hat trick in the previous game week? Three minutes to play. Nothing happens. And Steele will be delighted with that. Back to back wins. Back to back clean sheets. All be at home. And an Elbert. Another match performance as. Uh, the Des Moines Demons probably have more questions than answers now, given that performance. And Simkoviak on 62%. Early indications would be that it isn't a massive injury, but he will be waiting for packs with bated breath. Stay locked in control and was just clinical at the right time. And um, Elvis put in a really good performance there with, uh, with two goals there tonight. Next, we have El Loco Fire against Alcatraz. Now, I'm just going to pull this up now for you, Scott, because I know you, you, your WhatsApp does not said, kind of almost apologising for your submission, but it was absolutely fine. Um, just confirm all that with his mate, because it was obviously a, a couple of messages just broken down. Um, some really, really interesting. I love the fact that Scott's kind of going for this whole youth vibe. So we've got a couple of uh, really young players in there tonight. We've got Espinal, we've got Welsh, um, and we've got obviously Torres who scored, um, Pochi Sung's in there, some really, really interesting players in the side and some really, really interesting players not in the match day squad at all. Um, and some of these with, with kind of deals against them, which will be processed come the next packs. Just give you a couple of seconds there, Scotty. I'm pretty confident. Ah, you made changes for the low fitness players. Right, okay. Let's have a little, little look. Um, Johnny for us. You know. uh, where we at? Uh, and then Sorochinsky in for Welsh. Right, yeah, some reason that wasn't. Um... And then if you just pick your third sub, Scott, for us. Let me know who your, who your third sub wants to be there, mate. Um, and these are two teams at absolutely opposite ends of the division. Alcatraz yet to concede. A logo have conceded 12. Alcatraz have scored seven. A logo have scored two. Um, and then Espinal on the bench. I suspect he'll be getting a little bit of a run out. Over to the uh, the leader of the pack at the minute, and it's the uh, the king of the Corcoms. Um, Mr. Alcatraz himself, who just makes the one change. Nedved in, uh, Nedved is off for Seadorf, and there's absolutely no reason to change anything else. So here's everything about the defensive solidity of Martin Keown that Lucio isn't getting a sniff. What a guy he is, season one. 
It's been a bit of a precedent tonight of home wins. I think we've had home wins in every game. And there is Sebastian Deisler, who looks to keep it up. Are our local going to be? Um, are they going to leave just the Dandies and the Memphis Reigns as the only two sides without a win? But there is Pippo Inzaghi, who has started his Alcatraz career um, with a blinder. I think he only came on as a substitute the other night and uh, and scored on debut. Nick Tullin spills one, but the Alcatraz players weren't the ones in front of the ball. Collins, Davy Collins with a half a chance. He's been quiet so far this early in the save. Fernando Torres loves the ball on over. This is an end end game here. Really, really good game. And we'll see how it gets on. Park Ji Sung with a half a chance. And Elka was in trouble. And Lee Chun Su goes into the book for a bit of dissent. Really interesting and entertaining ones each at half time there, lads. We'll bring up El Lobo Fire. Lee Chun Su and Elgar and Torres just really not getting enough of the ball in that final third. Although El Lobo really did look right in that game with sixes for um, for four of their players. The rest sevens. And Nick Matullin, despite that effort he spilled, fallen the El Lobo defender is on an eight. Over to Alcatraz, this is probably the, the first time this season where Hopkins has maybe got a bit of a decision to make. Do you bring on someone like Igor Bishkan in that MC position to just be a little bit better and more effective in terms of the headers and tackles? Um, or do you just roll as is and keep the faith with a tactic and a formation that hasn't let you down so far? Torres goes up and then Alcatraz in AMC and roll is the instruction from Scotty. And we'll see what Hopkins wants to do. I think we could be seeing Igor Bishkan at MC. Seadorf just really isn't offering anything, despite a solid third column, um, isn't offering anything really in terms of the physicality and putting himself about. Um, maybe, maybe at 60, you might put Ebby Sand on for one of the AMCs, but we shall uh, we shall see. Or you might bring on Bishkan for Seadorf, put Davids and MC where me and Hopkins absolutely love him, and uh, and drop Bishkan in a, in a DM, Bishkan, Davids, and Daya potentially. But we'll see what Hopkins wants to do. I'll just give you a couple of seconds hop and then we're going to roll, mate, because that was quite a lot of quite a lot of time at half time, bud. Um, we will be back to next Wednesday for game week six, unless anything significantly changes, unless anyone fancies chucking on a bonus outside of me and Dan, or um in the event that in the event that game week 26 doesn't go ahead for Super League on Sunday, um, if Fifey's still on his holidays, we might we might chuck a show on, but we'll we'll wait and see what Fifey and Super League are doing. Out of uh, out of respect for them, and um, Hopkins, I am going to go to 60 now, mate. And if if your subs pop up, I'll do them. I'll do them at 60, but all right. It's ones each, and we see which team is going to get it. And there is Collins with the injury, bang on 60, almost as if it was being asked for. Um, and I imagine it'll be Ebby Sand. I'll bring up his conditions so Hopkins can just have a look. And then Scotty, I'll bring up yours, mate. And hopefully by the time you've had a look and submitted yours, Hopkins will have popped up in the chat and let us know what he wants to do. Chun Su's still on that six with that yellow card. It may be think that uh, Harasimovic might go on or Espinal might get that debut. And it is Espinal who comes in to make a debut. We've seen another AMC in Leonardo make his debut tonight. Um, I'm going to just see what Hopkins wants to do. I'll give it a couple of seconds and uh, we will uh, we'll crack on Hopkins if uh, if there's nothing coming from you. I think we'll bring on Abby Sand. Totally makes sense. And Scott is in there with just another change there quickly. Um, Harasimovic for Torres. How's he looking? 20s in some key places. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Just give Hopkins a couple of seconds there just in case he pops up out the blue. I think he's had plenty of time and he must be tied up with tied up with the boy or with the dog or something. So we'll crack on until 90 minutes. Someone hit the post there. I think it was Giovanni von Broncos hit the post. Raul goes into the book. <sighs> See it off for half a chance. Lucky to stay on the pitch. And if Hopkins was here, he probably wouldn't be. Vita Baia spills it. End the 90 minutes. And we are going to a golden goal situation. Alcatraz with more of the chances, but our local fire really putting themselves amongst it. Um, Scotty has one sub to make and also his team instructions change that he hasn't made just yet so Chinsky passing the ball at the core of everything um, Scott's in there with an as is 
there's nothing massive, significant jumping out there for Hopkins, and uh, don't think it would be fair at this stage to be making subs on his behalf with Scotty searching for his first win. Sana and Daya there doing what he does at DMC, just tackling for fun and controlling the game. So there'll be no changes at 105, but we will see who gets the golden goal. But there is Pippo, who does go off with an injury. Maybe a little bit of a change of fortune with two injuries for Alcatraz. Um, we'll crack on, as we haven't seen Hopkins. But Stuart gets himself amongst it straight away. It looks as though Alcatraz are looking for this winner. And we will see what happens. Alcatraz with just the one shot. A logo just with one shot, I think, as well. And nothing much significant. Maldini doing bits at half time in extra time. Are they going to share the spoils or are El Loco going to get their first win of the season? Peter's out into a ball draw despite a really solid start in the first 10 minutes. And um, probably more important that both managers didn't lose that than won it. In Dyer and Maldini absolutely standing out. Maldini's done absolute bits there. What a defender he is for first season. And um, El Loco with a much improved performance. And we have a rare draw, as Dimble says. In the uh, in the All Stars, brings us on to our second last game of the evening, and it is the New York Dandies who are searching for a win. Um, as their tactic file said, this is Dandies conformity. This is attempting to be a little bit conventional, and the Super Greeks or the Greek and the Cypriot Demis Nikolaidis, who was uh, it was a it was a, a home safe favourite along with Constantinou. Could be both myths at this stage, but we play the flat four across the middle. Jeremy's club and uh, Larson expected to do tackling bits against the Pelham side, who go like this. There is one change. Um, Ad Kalushny comes in for Eric Addo, and Hersey may be on his way out of the club, so we'll keep an eye on uh, on him for um, for uh, potential sub appearance. If Pelham want to win tonight, it will put some significant distance between Alcatraz and Pelham and the rest. And if Dandies were to fail to win tonight, then, you know, they're really up against it to overturn what would be a 13-point deficit um, and at least the eight-point deficit to Pelham. Best of luck, Dimble, my man. And we'll see how both teams get on there tonight. First time in ages where I'm up against a Ronaldinho in an opposing side from season one and um it's not nice seeing his uh, seeing his name against him and there is barry ferguson offside iron robbins offside dandies do look a little bit better with this flat four conventional across the across the middle but pelham always good value for a goal against the runner play archie back now are they going to regret these chances Montella with a chance pelham coming into it just before half time 30 minutes played 36 minutes played cafu ferguson misses again it's had one disallowed and one over the bar and there is Kaladze. Chiotis never saw it. We've seen that a couple of times there tonight, uh, rather this season. And the Dandies are going to be ruining their luck. Chiotis redeems himself there with a big save at half time. Absolutely woeful striking from the Dandies boys. We go over to Dimble as he's not live. Kaladze with a nine and um, no assist. Must have been a bit of a solo effort. Six there for Petit and a six there for Rondinho, but nothing much to worry about outside of that for Dimble's boys. Over to Dandies, much better. Ambrosini letting his side down and Archie back not doing much at all. Um, and we will roll. So we'll just wait to see what Dims wants to do there at half time. Hopefully, we can at least get one on target. Dimble rolls to 60 minutes. Can the Dandies get themselves back into it? It's a corner kick. And there is Archie back, who was going to come off at half time. Cafu with a big injury. That's going to hurt. Dimble, we will do half-time subs here, mate, as well. I think we're bang on 60. While Red comes on, and we'll bring on Van der Vaart for Ambrosini, who is struggling. Just switch them over as well. Over to the Pelham boys, Taibi on a six. It's a rarity for him. Kolojny on a six, who came in for Addo. I suspect we may see use of Hersey here, um, but who for? would be a question does he does he stick Ronaldinho up top and bring off one of the strikers and put Hersey as an AMC <laughs> Savage then injured Cafu has to be worthless yeah mate. yeah I think I suppose it depends if one of his uh, if the break has, uh, has split the skin mate I think 
Um, <laughs> and uh, Dims, if you'd let us know <clears throat> what you want to do there, my man, that'd be grand. Probably wondering how he gets Percy for Cole. And Adol for Kolojny, and that's all. Dimble is one of the few managers that has liked to do the old team instructions change up, but that hasn't happened so far. Can Dandies get the first win of the season? And there is why I'll read. Can the Dandies hang on here? Please fucking hang on. Hupia gets it clear. Ferguson, Constantino. And there is three back. Big, big win for the Dandies. Who would have thought that playing conventional formations actually has something in it? Um, they don't create that much, but they create a hell of a lot more than Pelham there, who really just didn't get going in that second half. Came into it from about 30 minutes. But the Dandies are leaving two teams without a win, and that is the uh, local fire and also the Memphis Reigns. Um, a five from Taibi. Really not doing himself any favours there. A rare five from Taibi and Petit and Kaladze, probably the standout performers in terms of tackles and headers. Um, Montella and Clive up top. You maybe kind of wonder if Dimble's going to cash in on one of these three, Owen, Clive or Montella. Um, and if you do fancy cashing in Dimble, give us a shout. But unlucky, mate, it's the first time this season where the Dandies have looked anything um, reasonably okay. Unlucky. Last game of the evening, we go over to the ever random um, short pump slots who have David Trezeguet at AMC and um, De La Bio as DML, which is a bit of a rarity. Don't think I've really seen him start many games in there. Um, and we go over to the Blackwater Gators who got themselves back on track with back to back wins. Um, and then Alcatraz kind of humbled them last time out, even though they had um, 10 men. And they do keep with the, you know, what is now becoming a, a formation synonymous with uh, with Dan. Um, three across, Totti and AMC, who everybody would love this. Um, and the Duke are up top. Interestingly, against the Dandies, they looked a mile better after Van Nistelrooy got injured. And all the goals came from that point onwards. Um, best of luck to both. Don't think Rob's going to be live because he's stuck in uh, in London. And um, I haven't seen Dan since the first kind of couple of seconds. So um, I will give Dan a little bit of time um, for subs. But in the event of Dan's coming through, we'll crack on because Rob has already sent me instructions for 60 minutes. Um, Sally Hamitich there. Shevchenko smashes it in low. Shevchenko who started like a house on fire, but it was against the Dandies. So uh, that probably says more than you, more than you think. Um, Viduka gets the goal on 44 minutes and uh, puts his team 1-0 up at half time. Gate has been absolutely bullied in terms of the header count um, and slots with just the one book in, but really, really solid with sevens across the board. Um, nothing much to complain about. Delivio doing uh, Delivio, Delivio. Um, I'm sure Horse will correct us. Um, doing bits from DMLC there, but Sloth's really just not getting amongst it and not controlling enough of the ball to, to have enough of the text there. Um, what was the goal? The goal looked interesting. Let's just have a little quick look. Um, Totty assist, flick on, into the Duga, and then, a, and then a finish. So we'll go over to Rob, who isn't making any change till 60. Brilliant. Thanks, Dan, mate. I appreciate that. But we'll just bring that up just in case you want to watch back boys and we will go until 60 and there is David Trezeguet who is off side and it doesn't count it's just about to say what do we know if he's getting bits out of uh, Trezeguet at AMC was that two foot by a gat maybe two foot by a gat but nothing happens Ayala gets in there with a double block and I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, you have got the right instructions Right, three up top on 60. Um, if my boys are not making it, um, there we go. And Alan Smith for Effenberg. There we go. And we'll go over to Dan. Dan, take your time, my man. No need to rush. Last game of the evening. Ruby Costa on 79%. Um, 
and sevens across the board still. You'd probably just be happy to just see this one up, to be honest. I don't think I don't think I've ever, ever, ever seen an eleven with all sevens by sixty minutes. Genuinely, I don't think I ever have. I don't think I've ever seen any eleven with the same number um, for all of those. Shivu for Rui. Back to day. I'll say, ooh, he's gone three at the back. Gone three at the back. Totty dropped back. He's trying to show it up. Dan, if you just let us know if you want to narrow on Totty or not. I'm I'm assuming you, you will. I'm assuming you will there, my man. So we'll uh, we'll just have a little look. If anybody does fancy a pop of Cafu, then do give us a shout. I've just brought in an MR, like a traditional MR. So he probably is service to requirements. Um, if anybody does want to pump with him. Lovely. And we go to the last 35 minutes of the half, of the of the match, of the night, really. And Gators do look to be in a little bit more control of this game now. Although Sloss do tend to score when you least expect it. Alan Smith with a chance. Roy Keane, who's had a very, very quiet start to his Sloss career. Um, and really hasn't done enough in that DMC position as the slots have changed things up. And there is an injury to Matarazzi. Um, injury to Matarazzi. You're probably going to say post there with his knowledge, as always. I think in background leagues with very few matches stored, you get loads of teams where everyone is a seven. Um, guessing it's going to be Redondo. Either you go two DMs as a as a two four kind of classic two four setup, or you uh, back to two. Yeah, makes sense. Makes total sense, my man. Hopefully, it's not a biggie. I know you're a big fan of Matarazzi early doors. Um, as we try and get, and nothing happens. Redondo probably doesn't even get a touch of the ball, and uh, the Gators are a little bit of a, a little bit of a topsy turvy side. They kind of tend to win one and lose one, but three points is three points in this league, and. Uh, particularly against the, the divisional rival and the Gators. Who would have thought that? The Gators go top of their league, albeit with a game over the Sloths and uh, Des Moines, uh, the Sloths and Steam Pigs, rather. Unspectacular, but just really effective from the Gators, that. Um, nobody really having much of the ball and nobody putting any amount of significant tackles in. Um, Sally Hamadic with a man of the match performance, that DMR and DML doing bits for him there. But you maybe think that in the end, just having this vacant MC position with only the one in there against the three has probably done Rob a little bit of a, um, a disservice there tonight. Really, really strong night for the home teams with only a local fire being the only home team um, to fail to win tonight. Otherwise, it's home wins across the board. We've got the Bisons who ran out 3-0 comprehensive winners against Drivetrain with a double, with a double goal uh, brace from Leonardo on debut. Vikings continue to pile the misery onto the Memphis Reigns and Sigalgo has now got four goals inside two games for them. Dandy's getting their first win of the season, having to concede that they needed to go um, conventional in terms of tactic at the absent arena and uh, leaving it late, but coming out 3-1 winners against Pelham there. A local fire, as we've seen, um, probably be disappointed with a point at home, but actually it's against the high-flying Alcatraz. Really signs of, of a bit of a recovery from, from uh, Scotty and something to build on. Gators, 1-0 winners over the short pumps loss that we've just seen. Viduka with his second goal inside two games. And, um, you know, effective if unspectacular from the Gators. And Steam Pigs put together two wins and two clean sheets now. Questions to be asked a little bit about this Des Moines team now. They're on a downward trend of form, I think. Um, but they'll absolutely turn it around with Mega Horse at the helm and Elbear with two goals inside the same game. Leaves the league tables look like this. St. Domingo's Bisons are now high flying on 12 points at the top of the Eastern Conference with a game in hand, followed by Drivetrain, Vikings, and Memphis Reigns yet to get off the mark. In terms of the Central, Alcatraz 13 points, Pelham on seven, Dandies on three, and a logo fire on one with all teams having played five. Alcatraz, the ones to catch in that division with Dandies, keeping you know keeping the early season alive with a win against Pelham. Over to the Western, definitely the tightest, the most interesting division. This I think Gators on nine points, um, Short Pump on six, Steam Pigs on six, and Des Moines on six. And you probably see for the vast majority of these sides, 
in in the entire competition there's probably still deals to be done and still best 11s to be worked out and um we'll not be progressing the save tonight we'll be doing it tomorrow just so that we give anybody time to, to do some deals tonight i think would be grand um cheers for your company tonight gents um we won our previous game against dan he said, sorry dan let's have a little look at what your form is yeah so you've kind of won one lost one lost one won one lost one yeah um i thought you looked really really good in that first game as well with johnny Hallady. Um, so yeah, we'll be back next Wednesday unless anything significant changes in terms of schedule and availability and bonuses. Um, cheers as always, lads, for being part of the league. It's a great welcome distraction um, in, a, in, a, in a bit of a, a bit of a busy life. So yeah, up the all stars and um, my DMs are open for deals. Get onto it. Good night and happy Easter weekend. <laughs>